So as you'll soon hear, somebody got the nerve to say they're getting ready to get a reality show. Yeah, this is the pilot. Don't go in there talking crazy either. I won't. I won't. Well, I got to get my wallet and my wallet is my pocketbook. And my pocketbook is somewhere out there and all of that stuff that they put after I asked them not to touch it. Oh, we are. I'll be right back. Now we've heard this tone before. We know she's about to be on some bullshit. Not nice, not polite, not professional. Just some bullshit. Hey, the constable's a lovely guy. We've been having a great conversation. Um, the people that y'all had, where is that um Mexican cunt? The uh the Mrs. Puff. Yeah, I need my pocketbook. They stole my pocketbook. Well, the constable is there. He saw them. I asked them not to touch my personal belongings. All right, well, let's go outside. Yeah, well, let's talk with the constable. He was right over there. Right. Let's go. Let's go talk to the constable. Where's my fucking pocketbook, bitch? Now you can tell this is someone who's been locked out before. My mom has what? That's funny because she didn't know nothing about it. I'm trying to go get the truck and get out of here. My pocketbook has Bob Marley on it. Yeah, she had her purse, not my purse. Yes, you did. And you heard me specifically say, don't touch my personal belongings. Ms. Wright, what does that mean when you are being forcefully, physically evicted? How do you tell someone not to personally, not to touch your personal belongings if they're removing your personal belongings from a home because you didn't? Come on, man. It's the entitlement for me. Because I'm going to have to dive through it because I think they buried it on purpose. What you going to do with your car and the truck? You can't drive both. No, I'm going to load up everything that I need to load up in the truck. Well, I can't tell you my whole plan because I'm live. Well, get up. You got your phone, man. Well, I, I can't. Because I'm an attention whore. Like this. So, uh, I got to I gotta figure it out, but I'm going to see if I can get somebody to help me drive so I can get my car and my truck into Louisiana at the same time. I'm going to have to go dumpster diving for my pocketbook after I specifically ask them, please do not touch any of my personal things. As a person who's had to start over time and time and time again, let me tell you, the best thing to do when everything is being taken away from you is let go. Yeah, my personal, yeah, remember I told them not to touch any of my personal things? Yeah. One of them took my pocketbook and buried it and all of that, and my brother came to get me to get a truck, and he's in the middle of working. He stopped work to do this. Your son's down there watching your stuff, right? Yeah, but he's also looking for my bag. And what about your life and lifestyle puts you in the position to rescue anybody? Everybody is shaking leg and moving to help you. So how dare you say that you are rescuing Angela Owosu? This is the very definition of unfit. You aren't even able to resolve this cleanly, plainly, privately, and discreetly. Ma'am, your mother, your son, and Angela all dependent on you? Shit, I could do bad by myself. Will do. Constable, I'm sorry, what's your name? My name's Mike. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I wish Mr. De M Mr. Delara. Delara. That's a beautiful name. It's Italian, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is, yeah. I spent a lot of time in Palermo. Did you really? Yeah. I, said, I, I used to date a guy. I just got back from the Carib uh, from the uh, uh, Mediterranean. My wife and I went on a three-week cruise. Awesome. Do more of that. I need a book. Look at people who don't do none of that. Can't do none of that. Telling somebody to do more of that. OMG. And if you've watched this video, then you know that she went into talking to this man about doom and gloom after he just talked about taking his wife on a beautiful vacation because that's what narcissists do. They can't feed off your positive energy and be like, oh, that was great. I'm so glad you did that. Tell me more about it. What inspired you to go? I'm so inspired too. No, they got to be like, yeah, do more of that because bad times is coming. Trump just got arrested. 
And if you don't go now, you'll never be able to go. Because that's how narcissists are. But, you know, but get, you know, you I handsome. Got tired, I got tired of doing the city cop thing. You should. I got tired of doing all that the mess. politics is too bad. So The politics is too bad. I've been here at the county for 31 years. Not this December, but next yeah. December, I'm gone. Good. History, I'm gone. Good. I'm heading out. Take the your pension. There you go. And go live your life with your beautiful wife. Yep, and that's uh, spoil my grandbaby. That part. What I'm going to do. <laughs> my son, he doesn't want to get married because my first divorce was so bad with his father. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He does not want to get married. I said, I need grandkids. Girl, this man don't want to stick around and talk to you. He came to do a job and it is done. He is about his work day. I bid you adieu. Have a conversation with him. He's smarter than me. <laughs> Bye, Mike. My, my, my. What a lovely constable. Who are we comparing him to? How many constables have you met? That number for the oversight committee. Yeah. Public integrity division. Could you email it to me? I can, let me look. My email address is jaguarright at gmail.com. If you can remember my name, you know my email address. Listen to me. I'll be 46 in May. I tell myself all the time, if I don't do it now, I'll forget it in five minutes. I hear you. That's why I have sticky notes with my friends. Oh, have, absolutely. Well, see, I do the sticky notes in the phone. Oh, I'm not sure. And then I put alarms on it so I can remember. I'm ready for old age. J I got all the tricks. J A G U A R A. What you actually mean is that you have poor organization GHT. and time management skills, also known as soft skills, because you aren't, never yeah. have been, and Thank have you. no intentions of being ambitious, employed, employable, an entrepreneur, <sighs> consistent, so or nice successful. That's what you meant Civil to servants. say. So... After dealing with the media blitz from last night, I wake up this morning and I come to the rental office to let them know that I was getting ready to go get the truck to start loading out the house. Well, instead they sent Mike, who's fucking absolutely amazing. Um, cutest constable I've seen in a long time. His wife is a lucky woman and she got to run around him in the Mediterranean. Woo! Mm. It's always good when people know when they have a good thing. But he gave me some very interesting information. We were listening to YouTube while they were loading everything out. And you know, I think it's kind of fitting because I was about to have to pay $600 to get people to come and move this apartment out and the furniture. And Legacy just did it for me for free. I've never seen the motherfuckers here work so much. They were actually dripping sweat today. It was fabulous. I mean, I for one believe in looking on the bright side, catching the silver lining and keeping a positive vibe. But we also have to take responsibility for what a, re what a situation is and see it through very real eyes. This was not a good day and this was not a good thing. License in it. So how can I possibly rent a truck? Can't rent a truck without ID or a license or credit cards. And at this so very now, same time, I have to go dumpster diving in this chat, like Queen Tulsa, for my own fucking are begging the people after I in told the that chat fucking Mexican for money cunt, for the move. Your fucking hands off if you're interested in donating to else. the move, do me a cash favor. app Jag Bags but too. don't touch my pocketbook. Come on, somebody. So, my brother so the moderators are in on it too. Please keep in mind that so your names are being recorded by those who need to know. Because I have to load up and get back to the police in Shreveport to make sure they've received all the rest of the evidence so they can issue warrants for uh, that, uh, that dirty Nikki bitch and my ex-husband because he informed me last night on night and day that he's already filed for divorce and signed the papers and in Texas you can get divorced without needing a signature. Honey, you just got physically evicted from your home. Your license, 
your financial information, your identification, and any way that you can provide food and shelter for those who depend on you, <clears throat> excuse me, has been removed from your control. Yet you're still concerned about your husband and his girlfriend. You're still concerned about Shreveport police having evidence to place warrants. But you don't seem to understand the gravity of the real situation that you're in right now. Honey, and you're the activist. You're the rescuer. You're the one we should depend on. And you're about to run for mayor of Shreveport. Okay, honey. Okay, honey. Mm. Sorry, guys. I got to do this. Oh, that one's broke. Do I have another? Oh, yeah, I do. I keep forgetting. My special lighter. Yeah, but anyway. Um, filters? Why would there be filters if I don't want no filters? Um. Uh, Who's married? The constable? Yay, Mary. With his fine ass. God must weep me. God really must want me to get up off the bench and get back into this dating thing. Because I keep meeting all these sexy men. Yeah, Jaguar just said it. There is a difference between dating and fucking. <laughs> There's a difference. Okay. Please don't stare at me. All these children around here know, don't stare at me. Wait, didn't she want to open a group Stop home for children so the children in Stop your own neighborhood can't talk to you and communicate Stop with you and Stop trust me. you? We already know you can't you can be trusted with young women, Everybody but you want to start a group home. She about to get into it with a child, y'all. And that's all right, because I got you on candid camera when y'all was down there bra brawling on that man. The police done seen you and your mama's fucking face. Fucking stupid motherfucking niggas. I can't wait to get the fuck out of this hole. My mama cussed you out. No, the fuck she didn't. You can tell that lie to yourself when you're jerking your little fucking dick. Because you look like one of them bastards that I saw over there on one of them girls rubbing your penis on her. You fucking pervert. You a pervert, kid. Don't talk to me. I don't talk to perverts. I don't talk to perverts. Fucking nasty ass fucking kids. All of them high on Bobby's special fitting all week. Running around here beating up on older people and shit. Let one of them run the fuck up on me. Sam, have you found my bag? Why is it any of his responsibility? I walked back and let Uncle Tone go. You still haven't found it yet? So, they loaded all of my things out. I was going to get a truck while they were loading out. And then they decided to play hide the bag with my license. So now, I have to go looking through all of my things to find my pocketbook that I specifically asked them not to touch, which you just heard the constable say. And uh, now I gotta look for it. So this is legacy. This is legacy of Cedar Hill. This is where we used to live, where kids used to come and bang all over my door because they found out I was famous. No. Say what? Famous for what? But <laughs> look at where I'm leaving. This is where my husband wanted to live. Because he wanted to be close to his mama. I want to be close to my mama. I don't want to move to your daddy. I want to be with mama. And guess what? He was so excited. He was so excited. And he jumped in the car. And we, we drove over there. And drove past our old house. And guess what? Guess what? Them pussies had fucking moved. And didn't even tell him. But they love him so much. How and your responsibility at that moment as a wife was to book him a therapy appointment. That was your responsibility. Not to save it in a bucket and laugh about it four years later. Y'all remember that night on my Instagram page? They sat there and they beat the fuck out of that man. 
And that man live over there. I just found out he from Louisiana. No wonder I liked him. Got a nice dog too. This is where that fight was going on. And guess what? Legacy didn't do shit about it. Not a goddamn thing. This, and neither did you apparently. Shit, you videotaped it and met the dog, probably sucked his dick for a beef patty and went back home to your husband and your mama and your child and Angela. You didn't do shit about it either. And I don't give a fuck about that goddamn parking space. There's a drug dealer that is right there. That motherfucker be servicing people in the parking lot all the time. Welcome to Legacy, Morgan Properties. Thank you for this trip down memory lane. However, what you don't seem to realize is that you are revealing that so much of what you said is a lie. Because if you are a ghostwriter, a trust fund baby, if you have $450 million in a Swiss bank account, if all these things are true, then why are you dependent on your husband, as you should be, but you can't be, for something as low as this? I say it again, I could do bad by myself. me with. This is what he left me with. This is this is what he left me to deal with. While he's sitting over there playing Call of Duty and I'm still moving his belongings. He didn't even come back and get the rest of his stuff, lazy fucker. Okay, it's not in here. It's not in this toe. What? That's okay. It's all right. That was his glass. The other glass is mine. It can be broken. We brought those for our anniversary two years ago in Phoenix to toast. It's good that it's broken. It's a sign of good luck. It means he's gone forever. And he will be as soon as he goes to jail. Cause my husband ain't brave enough to make it through lockup. Y'all, let the church say if he going to jail, she going to jail too. He not. He's a fucking coward. And he's always been a coward. Tell you a true, true story about my marriage. I can't wait to fucking get fucking moved and move into my new goddamn house. Because I promise you, okay, this came from the kitchen. Y'all, this is really sad to watch a woman of 46, almost 46 years old, rummage through her own belongings that have become trash because her arrogance refused to make her resolve a situation early enough that she would be able to bypass what she's currently experiencing. And now she's digging through trash and about to take us down an irrelevant trip down memory lane while her son and her elderly mother search for her purse. Not once in these next moments will you see her actually look for her own purse. Here we go again. Somebody fixing jag shit. She's not even looking for her own purse somebody else is doing it and she's snapping on them this woman right here this woman right here for months i throw away 300 worth of food that you waste every month and people tell me that i abuse you they should get a load of you they should get a load of the real you we're looking for my pocketbook hold on a second is it in here i tried to make sure that they didn't fuck over things too badly sam check in these bags here baby what you meant to say was what many of us adults have had to say i tried to make sure that i didn't fuck over things too badly however i failed and here we are and this is my responsibility to resolve sam mama here why don't y'all go with tone and i'll make sure y'all got a safe place to stay tonight while i try to figure the rest of this out no nah, instead she went live and she got moderators begging for you to send her money she got her mama and her son in real time in the heat checking into bags for her belongings oh jesus we up to that he forgot the gun box. Let's see what's inside. Surviving Jaguar, right? Fucking surviving Goomba. 
Let's see what's inside. Somebody needs to call CPS on me because I abuse my mom. I abuse you, mom. Let's see what's in this box. Okay, that's the fast loader. What's this? 380. Oh, these are the bullets from my gun. This is my gun box. Yeah, see, he stole my gun. Well, actually, he didn't steal it. Uh, the DeSoto Police Force gave it to that l raving lunatic. So what actually happened was Jaguar went into the police department playing chicken, got arrested. There was fear that Angela may have been either willingly or unwillingly alive or unalive in the back of the Ford Flex owned by Jaguar Wright, Jacqueline Suzette Wright. So the police were contacted. The police breached the vehicle to see if there was anyone in danger inside the vehicle and found Goomba's gun. That's what happened. And so they play all of their little Texas games and they play all of the little bullshit to constantly and needlessly annoy you into wanting to go home. So Texas made you stop paying your rent and not be out of your apartment before the constable came and made the people who moved you out of your apartment misplace the purse that you should have had out of their days, weeks before anyway. We all knew you were getting arrested weeks ago. How come you didn't? You've still been there. The power was off. The parking was no longer in effect. You can't even park your car there. You just gonna hold off because life don't work for you the same way it works for the rest of us, huh? Five minutes away. I could have loaded all this stuff up on the truck. Hi, ma'am, how are you? Are you a tenant here in Legacy? Uh, warning to anybody listening, if you ever see this boorish woman with this large forehead come at you with a camera, don't engage. Do not engage. Is it anything like you thought it would be? Because you remember when you first call and they give you the tour and they tell you you're going to have granite counters and you're going to have this and you're going to have that and then you come and find out it's only, you know, microfeed. So you're having a bad day because of the apartment complex? So the condition of the apartment complex is why you're moving. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I, 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 it was so funny because they moved me out today. So I'm grateful for it. Well, no, because I was gonna have to pay $600 for that. I just saved money. But they took my pocketbook and they hid my pocketbook. I asked them, do not touch my personal belongings. And they took my pocketbook and they took my shoes. My son had to go dumpster diving. Watch the moment when this poor lady realizes she's talking to a lunatic and she is smart enough to discontinue the conversation. It's a little too late, but. <laughs> I'm the one that filmed it. It was on my Instagram page. Well, and the cops were over here not like a couple of days ago, I think. Because well, someone, someone just got killed just yeah. the day of, of the day, two days after the brawl. Oh, okay, so somebody did get killed. Well, yeah, they, yeah, on the other side, they got shot. Well, and it, three days ago, there were cops out here again because one of the neighbors said somebody got stabbed or something. I was paying $2,000 a month. Are you paying about that? About that yeah. How about Jaguar that? who? Who was paying $2,000 a month? Who? It definitely isn't what I expected it to be when I moved here. So. It's the hood. Yeah. It's the fucking projects. Yeah. And these kids are mean, they're maniacs. There, there, are, there are some mean kids around here. Crazy. And they get mad because I curse them out. Mm. And tell them, go get your mama if you want to. I don't give no fuck. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I have to get back to Please, you. Please, go. I hope all What's the dog? Good. His name is Chris. Can I pet? Uh, you can try. He's a little anxious. I'm pretty he, good uh, with animals. Hey, Kerchak. He's a Chihuahua Dachshund mix. Oh, he's so a he's bitch. A he's a real he bitch. He can be sometimes. Come here. Just to pay. Hey, friend. Hey, friend. He can be. Hey, hey, you know what? Te quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> well, I hope you the best for What's you. What's your name? Uh, my name is Gaylene. Nice to meet you, I'm Jaguar. Jaguar, nice to meet you. Move nice as soon you. as possible. I, I am. And I guess am. what? Guess what? If they stop, stop paying them. Period. I tell you what, misery sure does love company. That's from a legacy tenant. That's a legacy tenant. See, I wasn't here, I was in Louisiana, I just got back. Someone just got stabbed? 
in these apartments. This is where my husband wanted to live. This is where he wanted to move. So he could be close to his mama. And Jacqueline, what were your other options? Hmm. If I understand correctly, you were sleeping in a car prior to this. So much. Hopefully she love you enough to keep money on your books, honey. I showed the constable that picture that your fucking bitch putting me um, up sucking your dick. Everybody thinks you're a real fucking scumbag. When they were moving us out and they moved our bed, it was so interesting because one side of the bed, like underneath the bed, perfectly clean. The other side covered in trash because I wasn't cleaning up under his bed. I'll clean up the room, but I'm not cleaning up under your bed, you dirty fuck. So why be the wife? Why be the helpmate? Why be the armor bearer of a man if you can't be the lock to his key, if you can't be the strength to his weakness, if you can't clean up under his side of the bed? You are resentful, and that is where you get him back. If you know that's a weakness in his life, a, 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 a weakness in his being, why not be his wife and his partner and just clean up behind, clean up under the bed? You live with the man. He took you out of a car. That's your husband. Why not just do it? You want to be his wife though, right? Deuce, the paperwork that he filed that we are divorced because I tried to see if I could track it down, but it doesn't seem to be filed yet. So he got on night and day last night and said that we are now legally divorced, which means I can testify against him. So please someone go and ask Jerry LaHoskin Johnson Jr. Translation. OMG, that means he can testify against me now. Because the only reason this woman was holding on to this man was so that he would not be able to testify against her in a court of law. Because she knows what she's up against and she knows what they've done together. Sensitively, because we're married, because we no longer are. So can y'all, um, I don't know, go find him playing Call of Duty or something? No, I don't have to worry about divorcing anymore because uh, my husband got on night and day last night and uh, defended his parents and defended their church after I accused them of money laundering publicly for the first time. And he said his daddy great and his mama great and the church is great and they're excellent representatives of the Kojic church. And I got an exclusive for y'all. Here's a bombshell. We're divorced. I signed the papers. We're not married anymore. So please produce the documents, Eddie. Eddie, it. Please produce the documents so I can give them to the police. Now I'm calling bullshit on you. If we are divorced, prove it and show the documents. I need the record numbers. She swore up and down it couldn't be done. All you have to do is Google and you'll find out that in the te state of Texas, it is the kind of state where you can file for a divorce and actually finish that divorce without the consent of the opposing party. Why? Because you are an individual person when you get married in Texas. She thought she had control. <laughs> You are unraveling, OMG, this is awesome. I just need to find my pocketbook in the midst of all of my belongings after I ask them not to touch it and not to move it. So now, Sam is looking. Look, Sam over there looking for my pocketbook so I can go rent the truck and we can load this thing up.
this is what my husband done to me. I'm sorry, my husband, because we're divorced now. Ma'am, let's be honest. You had no intentions of renting a truck and getting these things because they would have been gotten already. You've been back and forth to this apartment for weeks, clearing out, cleaning out, moving, packing, and preparing to relocate. You knew good and goddamn well this day was coming, and you had no intentions of moving out the things that were there today. So don't sit here and play people as though the reason why you cannot leave the place where you are is because because you need to rent a truck to get your things. You know as much as I do that you could just pack that little Ford Flex with what you've got left in the very basics of what you need and go to your beautiful new pristine neighborhood in Shreveport and start over. Get new furniture, get new dishes, get new everything because you know as much as anybody else at your age that things can be replaced. So you know that you're now putting out a play to raise money for something, again, you have no intention of doing. So what is it, time to get your braids redone? Last night, they had 10 fake Jags last night. There was four fake Jags that I found on Queen Tulsa's page. Um, There were six on Sean Davyway's page, and one of them actually tried to go live while I was backstage. It's just fucking weird. From what it's sounding from everyone that I've talked to, including King Payne, I think the count is up to 55 fake Jaguars. 55. If y'all hate me so much, why do you want to be me? Head of Jaguar. The word in Arizona is they want the head of Jaguar burned and thrown in the Grand Canyon. Okay, that's the word. All right. I don't know why. Self-harm. There we go. Is this it? No, that's not it. My pocketbook has Bob Marley on it. It's the bag that I carry every day, Mom. Y'all know I wasn't gonna let that pass. That's a wallet. This bitch it's got her mama pocketbook. out in the heat searching for her Bob Marley pocketbook. And she got the nerve to snap? Hey, Mom. Bitch. Hey, Mom. They're all online right now saying that um they're gonna call CPS. Watch her try to fix so this moment. Abusing you. Do you have anything to say about that, Mom? Uh, guy what guy? The hold on, child. Hold up. Protective services came out here when? Yeah. Was it yesterday? Or the day before? And he wanted to know about my insulin. If I had enough insulin. Yeah. And uh, I told him yes. Yeah. Now, the day Adult Protective Services so, came out to check on Jaguar's mother, they wanted to know about her insulin. And if she had enough insulin, please take note of that because Adult Protective Services is back on the way and they do not do their job. Rescuing you because I abuse you. What do you say about that, Mom? I don't say nothing about it because it's not true. Well, why isn't it true? Because it didn't happen. Well, you know, when you bust into the bathroom when I was naked the other morning going live? Yeah. And I forgot to lock the door and you just barged in and used the toilet anyway while I was live on YouTube? Yeah. And you startled the crap out of me? Yeah. They said that I threw a bucket at you. Oh, no. Poor Sam. Poor fucking Sam. They said I threw Sam. a bucket at your head. What? What's up? What is going hey, on? Hey, Foley, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. What's going on? I'm trying to move. <laughs> But see, when they came in, uh, legacy, to move out all my things, I asked them to specifically not touch my personal things. I would carry them out myself because I wanted to go straight. My brother came to pick me up to take me to get a truck so we could start loading this stuff on. 
They took my bag and they buried it somewhere in all of my things. We've been looking for it for the past half an hour. So, and they, and, and the constable, Mike, you know, Mike Delara. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he's the constable. He's the one that came today. Okay. Wonderful guy. You should check him out. Um, he said, I heard them tell you, I heard you tell them, don't touch your pocketbook. So they took my pocketbook and they buried it. Who is Francis? My mother. Hi ma'am, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Hi. So I got called because- We're live on YouTube. Oh, sweet, hi. I'm, this is Officer Foley. So someone called because they said you needed some rescuing. Really? Yeah, are you okay? Oh. Yeah, do I look like I need rescuing? I got my daughter, my grandson here. Some strangers Nobody's gonna bother me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, they said he was in jail for beating up one of my clients and that they had secretly got married and he impregnated oh, her and oh beat goodness. her. We found um, Angela Awosu is your client. May we please see that client enrollment form? May we please see the client agreement? May we please see the client contract? May we please see your plan and your method on how you're going to treat and care for Angela? See, y'all gotta stop being like these white folks out here talking about you rescuing puppies when you went to the Humane Society and paid for them. You better cut it out because what you've gotten caught up in is human trafficking and forced labor. Angela Owosu is not and has never been your client. She has been your victim. They buried it on purpose. Legacy. Just buried it on purpose. Have you talked to anybody? Today? Yeah, I went up there. What they say? You have to leave. That has nothing to do with us. You're just going to have to find it. Now, if you wanted me out of here so fucking bad, why are you holding me here? So no mention of calling the woman a Mexican cunt or, I mean, it just amazes me how people just tell their side of the story. It's just their fucking side of the story. Come on, tell the whole truth. I mean, my wallet's in there. My license is in there. My credit cards is in there. My brother left work to take me to get the truck. Where's my pocketbook? Officer Foley, can I, can I file charges on that? Uh, I, let, let me ask you this. Did they evict you? Is that what happened? They evicted my mother and my husband. My name was never on this lease. Okay. Well, I guess if they went through the legal process and you said the constable was out here? Yes, and the constable heard me and asked them not to touch my things, and now they buried my pocketbook. Yeah, I... How am I supposed to get a truck? Who's going to rent that truck for me? I don't know. If, if I can't get to my wallet. I would get a hold of the constable that... He, he just was... left. What did he say about the whole thing? He said, find your bag, keep it cool, yeah. just calm down. Because they've been every Mexican fucking cunt that I can think of this morning. Yeah, the constables handle the eviction stuff, so they... Yeah, but the thing is, they hit... Legacy was the one that moved it. And they took my pocketbook and buried it, so I can't go get the truck. Yeah, but there's, there's not a charge I can file for them doing that. Is there a charge that you can file for false reporting that someone's hurt when they're not hurt? Well, I... By the way, who is the complainant? Can you please tell the audience who the complainant is? I, I don't have a complainant. It's an anonymous person. So you got an anonymous phone call from YouTube. I don't know who did it. No, that's who did it. Because okay. they were just saying it in the chat. I have it all right here. Okay. Well, Can you talk to the people about how illegal it is to call and keep making false claims like this? I, I don't, don't want to go on YouTube. I'm sorry. I'll let you he do doesn't want to go on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you do that part. Um, but yeah, all I came by was to check on Francis. Francis is doing good. She doesn't look like she needs rescuing. So we'll get out of here. But like I said, I just wanted to. Do you know how ridiculous this is? It seems ridiculous. Yeah. Hiding my pocketbook when I'm trying to. So Officer Foley's assessment is that Francis is fine. Now that makes sense with the information he has right now. But the conversation continues, and you tell me if Francis is fine. Now my pocketbook's gone. I, I would get a hold of him if he was out here. Well, can you ask them for his number? Because I'm not going back up to that office. Ask the yeah the the, the, the people office. at the front desk yeah for the constable's number. Yeah, I can do that. Let me go see what they can. Thank you, Officer Foley. I don't know if they'll give it to me, but I'll certainly go ask. How are you doing today? I'm good. How's the family? Good. Did they have fun yesterday for Easter? I'm sure they did. And now that I've unloaded on you, how are you doing and how is your family? Oh, please allow me to reveal that your family doesn't know you, that you don't even know what your kids did yesterday for Easter. Okay. So that's what we doing now? 
I'm always amazed at how charming narcissists can be. And then when they get you back alone by themselves, that's when you see the real abuse. That's when you see their real faces. She couldn't wait to get away from Officer Foley so she could tell us what she really thought about the people who called APS on her mother. And may I please remind you that she did the same thing to Tasha Kibi. I talk to that officer all the time. We joke all the time. We talk about Beverly Hills Cop and how he's a famous cop because he's Officer Foley. What? Y'all mad? Guess what? You won't be sending CPS to our new address. Because the neighborhood is pristine. And I know all the cops that work there too. So there won't be any phone calls in Louisiana. Mm. Oh no, I did have my purse on me. They were moving the bed. I took my purse and put it on the floor so that they could take the bed while I was helping them remove the bedding to bag it up. And they took my pocketbook. So they took it while you were moving the bedding? Yeah. They took my, they took my pocketbook because I had my pocketbook on the bed, asked oh. them not to touch my belongings. I just went through the bedding bag. It's not in there. What the hell? Is it here? It has to be. Is it here? If it's not here, then that means I can file charges on them for stealing because that means they stole my pocketbook. They were the ones in here touching everything. And now I'm not gonna be able to make it to the DA's office in time. So now I gotta change my travel schedule again. I would have been home in Louisiana for dinner. This is so easy to see when a person is uh, extremely obese or a drug addict or engaging in some other self-harming behaviors, you can easily see the enablers around them scrambling to keep them happy to stay out of the target. And that's exactly what Sam and his his grandmother are doing. They're trying to keep Jaguar happy so that she doesn't explode on them. That's all they're trying to do. They're trying to survive in this toxic environment. I got my lighter on the bed. It has a laser beam and everything. See? <laughs> mm. He walks into the room, sees my lighter on the bed. Now, I'd already shown it to the constable. She's got a gun! She's got a gun! She's got a gun! So I picked it up and I showed him what my gun looks like. It's a fucking lighter, you pussy. All these fucking ghetto pussy ass motherfuckers that live up here. Fucking pieces of shit, every last one of them. Mom, did you hear? I was talking to the neighbor. Somebody just got stabbed the other night. How many people got shot? It's only, it's only April. There's been four shootings, two murders, and now a stabbing. And then there was that brawl when they beat that unfortunate man from Louisiana over there. Yeah, there was a murder over here last month. And people pay $2,000 a month to live in a fucking project? Somebody just got stabbed. And they wonder why I walk around this motherfucker on. I wish one of these pussies would try to run the fuck up on me. I'll show you what to do with that knife. I'll take it from you and fucking take your throat out. Welcome to Legacy of Cedar Hill. I'm so glad we're leaving here today. And we are leaving here today. Today marks the day that I leave all things Gerald Lahoskin Johnson behind. Today is the day. This is really D-Day. What? Now you know good and damn well, you know good and motherfucking well, if you said yeah to your mother or what to your mother, you get knocked across the room. This is disrespectful. Okay, so let's just talk about the last few minutes of bullshit. First of all, you told the vet, the lady at the crisis hotline, you were not some poor veteran's wife waiting for his check. Yet when he disconnected himself from you, you no longer had this place to live. Second of fucking all, 
are you really sitting here telling us that you are going to go through these things and you've been online on live this long and have not looked through these things and your mother has been in the heat searching poor thing but she might be part of the problem There's a boy right over there that sells drugs and runs prostitutes. I've been watching him. Hi, neighbor. Actually, we're not neighbors no more. I'm moving. I hope you can move too. You don't want your child around here for this shit. Let's see if we can talk to some more tenants from Legacy. Would you like to do an interview with me about your time here at Legacy? I'm live on YouTube. Just visiting from where, if you don't mind me asking. Huh? To visit family. How do you like it here? It's all right. Well, be safe. I don't know if you just heard somebody just got stabbed the other night. It just had a murder here about a month ago. How you doing, neighbor? This the kind of low life person who lacks integrity, who will be on somebody else's lease for years. Not on even, not even on the fucking lease. Living rent free for months during an eviction. And then the day they finally get evicted, they'll go on Yelp and leave a bad review on the apartment complex of everything they didn't like. But they didn't leave none of that Yelp review while they was paying rent. Why? Because they never did. Come on, somebody. This scallywag. And y'all say we need to take it easy on this hoe. Come on. Yeah, and all of that stuff. Go through it and find it. Oh, we, we've been looking. So what are you saying that somebody took the pocketbook? I don't know. Did somebody take the pocketbook? Look at this baby. Look at this baby. You remind me of my king. Hey, girl. Hey girl, how you doing? You remind me of my king. What you doing? What you doing? I love me a pit bull. I miss my dog. Hey Foley, what did they say? Oh, that I talked to them and they don't have a, how don't you have a number for the constable? I mean, they might have a number for the constable's office, but not directly to him. Well, he has my email address, so he's supposed to be emailing me anyway. They said, and I don't know because I wasn't here, but mm -hmm. they said that your mom had the... No, my mother had her purse. Oh, they buried my purse just to just to annoy me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, that's not something that we can unfortunately get involved in. That's the constable's lane. They deal with the eviction stuff. And that's a civil thing. Yeah, I know. So... Well, you want to take another look at my mama and make sure I'm not in here killing her? You know I'm a serial killer. She appears to be just fine. She does? Okay. Well, don't worry. You won't be getting any more phone calls about this because we're leaving today as soon as I can go get this truck. Now, Jaguar brought up the condition of her mother again. And please pay attention to how this conversation goes and tell me if Foley made the right decision to leave. But is there and I got family there. And Dallas has become a little bit much with all of the celebrity and all of the and my mama, you see my mama and my son, we need quiet. And that's my son. That's the only one I got left. My other son was murdered in Arlington almost five years ago. You should have saw the way they tried to manhandle his urn. I told him you touch my dead son again and I'll take your throat. I told him you touch my dead son again and I'll take your throat. I told him you touch my dead son again and I'll take your throat. I told him you touch my dead son again and I'll take your throat. Well, you know, between that and the sex tape and my car being blown up by my husband and being harassed by YouTubers who call the police. And lied to the police? I don't know where you live. Because my husband doxed me and he put this address out online. Yeah. 
get out of here and go somewhere that he doesn't know about? We're going to Louisiana. He knows the house we're moving into because he was supposed to move into it. But I know the police there. And I'm moving I'm, I'm moving to a very nice neighborhood. Good. Good. So it won't be none of that foolishness. The only time I've been to Shreveport is to do some gambling. Margaritaville? Uh, I haven't been to that one. Mm -hmm. Next time you go to Shreveport, you go to Margaritaville. Yeah. Go to Jimmy Buffett's Steakhouse. Okay. It is sublime. My friend is the manager there. His name is Quincy Williams. Thank you, Tell him Jaguar sent you. Okay. Yeah, I haven't been to Shreveport since they built that one. Oh, then you what gotta come. City? Yeah, what, it's in Bossier. I mean, uh, what's the name of the casino? Um, Are you talking about the, uh, the horseshoe? You know, it's only across the street. Like right I, I go the same one all the time, but I haven't been in. You can always look me up. I'm the easiest person in the world to find. Jaguar right. Next time you come to Shreveport. Look at your mom. I know. Talk to him about another medication bag with all my medicines in it. And I put it in the bathroom so they can bomb it. They brought it out and put it in the bag and I can't find it. So I'm diabetic, and if I don't find that, when it's time to eat again, I, I won't have it. Yeah. You need the medics to come out and check your blood sugar? No, okay. As soon as I get my wallet, if I need to go buy you some insulin, I will, but my wallet is in my pocketbook. I got my insulin can in you, the bag. Can you buy insulin? Yeah. But it's okay. the metformin. Oh, the metformin. That, that has to be prescribed. Yeah. We'll call the, the pharmacy, but we can't do anything until I get my wallet. Now, look at how Jaguar is looking at the camera, knowing good and well this conversation is being recorded. She's smart enough to know that the first time they came out, it was to see if her mother had enough insulin. And her mother's saying, I don't have it. I can't find it. And watch how Detective Doofy decides to handle this situation. Because all the cards are in my, in my wallet, in my bag. Do you have any saved on your phone? Like, uh, what's it, Google Pay? I don't Apple do Pay? Google Pay because I get hacked. That makes sense. Only thing I do is cash app. Okay. But I can't rent a truck with cash app. I still need my ID. You think they'll let you pay for some medicine with cash app? I don't, I don't know, know. I don't know if any of the pharmacies do that or not. I don't think they I don't I think they do Google Pay. I don't think they do cash app at Walmart yet. Well, like it you've got your phone, so that's good. If something changes with your mom and she needs her blood sugar checked, please call us so we can get the medics out here. I'll call you fully. Y'all know good and goddamn well that if something happens to Francis, the authorities will never be called. She, Jaguar Wright, Jacqueline Wright has done her best to avoid being caught up and made aware that she is unfit. She's not going to protect her mother. She will cover this up before anything. Poor person. A little rattled because he's annoyed yeah. he's annoyed with these youtubers calling the police calling the police calling the police calling the police people that have never met me people that don't know me people that don't know my mother yeah. you know this is what happens when people get fixated onto someone see right now I'm the villain hmm. I'm poison ivy why would they say that because they want me to be the bad guy they know what's going on with yeah, they know what's going on. They've all been watching it. Oh, I'm they, with your husband. Yeah, they call us the reality team. All of this is being documented on YouTube. Oh, they're calling my life a reality TV series on YouTube now. Oh, so I gave it a title, Welcome to the Circus. <laughs> and my paper covers your rock. I gave we it start a new filming title, later this Life month. Without a GED. Okay. It was a great idea. They're absolutely right. My life is a reality TV show. Who's going to film it? My crew in my production house. Okay. Philadelphia Productions. Holy cow. I have my own Roku TV channel. No kidding. Yeah. Oh my goodness. She's like super famous. Yeah, I'm famous. Okay. I've been famous a long time. Yeah. Ever since me and Jay-Z did the Unplugged special on MTV, the number one MTV Unplugged special of all time. Yeah. yeah. I, don't watch MTV in a long time. I played Madison Square Garden with him for the sold out show. No kidding. You remember the film Fades of Black? That would, as a matter of fact, be the last time we heard from you. I don't watch that much TV. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> it rots the brain. Look at what it does to the brain. You're here because of YouTube. Sweet. <laughs> it's good to see you again anyway. Good to see you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Take care of your mom. You if know. you're ever in Shreveport, look me up. Okay. I'll take you out for a steak. Okay. I can never get off work and get out there again. You better make, you better call out sick. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, we done seen Jaguar Wright get curbed how many times by now on camera? 
And she don't know when she being let down easy, do she? Oh, Jesus, woman. No, people aren't fixated with you. You put yourself out there and you put other people at risk to the point that there is a social responsibility that goes along with reporting you. <sighs> and lying to the police about me. They need to shut this place down. This place is a cancer. Drugs everywhere. Prostitution. Like my neighbor. Over here. You live right there. They beat the fuck out of him. The next morning I saw him. He still had blood all over his clothes. He hadn't even changed his clothes. He was so traumatized. This fucking place. They need to shut Legacy down. Now they stabbing people. Shooting people, killing people. People pay $2,000 a month to live here. I don't know. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me get a one in the chat. Jesus, how many comments? Let me get a one in the chat. If you think legacy should be shut down. Let me see. Let me see what the world thinks about the pristine. Oh God, these comments is on fleek. Put a one in the chat if you would pay $2,000 a month to live in the projects and have to worry about getting shot and stabbed by your neighbors. Yeah, you told me to go find it. It's buried in there somewhere, but if it's not in there, then that means Legacy stole my pocketbook. After I specifically asked them not to touch it, because it was my personal property. Okay, I'm looking in the dumpster. I don't see anything in there. That's a damn marvel. This world is in trouble. I still ain't seen. Put a one in the chat. You think legacy? Jesus. Foley, get going. She ain't got time for small talk. Always got time for small talk when it comes to good cops. Always. I'm finna come. Just give me a second. Y'all worry about... You wanna take pictures of me, ho? Huh? You wanna take pictures of me, you dumb fucking bitch? Was you the one that called the cops?